testing. Lots of folks in the audience today, welcome. Please turn your cell phones to mute, if you would, please. Everyone ready to go? All right, time being six o'clock, I'll call this meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Don. Here. Dan. Here. Gary. Joe. Here. Sherry. Here. Item number three, does any commissioner have a reason to abstain for a financial or a non-financial conflict of interest? I do not. Finish, no. I do not. Item number four is approval of agenda. We do have one change. The claims listed on number six needs to be moved to 7A as part of our new business. So if you would add 7A claims to your agenda, are there any other proposed changes? Move approval of the amended agenda. Second. I have a motion by Clemish, a second by Healy to approve the amended agenda for the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 4-0. Amended agenda is approved. At this time, would anyone care to make a public comment? There being no public comment, public comment is closed. Item number five, we have approval of minutes from December 15th of 2020. Are there any corrections to the December 15 minutes? Move approval. Second. I have a motion by Healy, a second by Clemish to approve the December 15th, 2020 minutes as presented. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Dan, I didn't hear you. Yeah, vote. yeah I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you. I'll move this closer. Minutes are approved 4 0. We also have uh, minutes for December 29th of 2020. Move approval. Second. I have a mo motion by Kettering, a second by Clemish to approve the December 29th, 2020 minutes as presented. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries 4-0. Item number six, December payroll. I'd move approval. Second that motion. I have a motion by Healy, a second by Clemish to approve the December payroll as presented. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries 4 0. All right, that was pretty zippy. It's 6 05, and we are at item number seven, which is 2021 reorganization. Okay, now we uh, need a motion to go on to, to adjourn Sendai. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Clemish, second by Healy to approve Sindai. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries. Oh, I guess you don't need that. You have one. At this time, I will call for nominations for chairperson for 2021. I nominate Joe Healy for chair. I'd nominate Sherry Lost for chair. I'll second Sherry. <laughs> Move, Move nomination cease. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Commissioners. All right. I entertain uh, motions for vice chair. I nominate Joe Healy. Nominate Don Kettering. Uh, I will second Joe. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Move aye. aye. All opposed nay. Motion carries. Uh, Mr. Healy is vice chair. All right. Yep. Um, Wanda, you can come on up. I, Don Kettering, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of South Dakota and faithfully discharge the duties of Yankton County Commissioner to the best of my ability. I, Wanda Holly Fox, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of South Dakota and faithfully discharge the duties of Yankton County Commissioner to the best of my ability. Welcome, Commissioner Fox. Go ahead and turn your microphone on so we can all hear you. There should be a little voice, a little voice button. Perfect. Yep, the lights on, you're good to go. Goes on. All right. We are at uh, item 7A, which we added uh, claims. And there's also a printed claim that was not in the electronic packet. And those just came late. Are there any questions on the claims? I'd move approval. Second. I have a motion by Healy, a second by Kettering to approve the claims as presented. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Item number eight, the first on the list is the calendar. And you need separate motions for each of these, correct? Yes. Okay. Well, I, yes, I do. Okay, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, and, and just for a clarification with regard to the claims on page three, well, it's page three of mine, I printed mine out. Uh, the top one on mine is Harm Lincoln Fox Law Office. I don't feel it's appropriate for me to vote on that. So I would abstain from voting on that, but would approve the balance. Thank you. Okay. All right, the first on item number eight is calendar. So there should be a colorful, did you give it at the last meeting, last Patty? Meeting, yeah. I was gonna say, that's where I got mine. And there was no really changes because the convention is in September and it's not a week, it's that third week. In September, so we didn't have to change any date. Okay. And there's no election, so it's pretty straightforward. So there's no changes from what this was. Okay. 
So unless someone uh, has a change request, I'd entertain a motion to approve the calendar as presented. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Kettering, a second by Healy to approve the 2021 calendar. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Committee assignments. So there was a printout at your desk. Most of the assignments remain the same. Commissioner Fox was substituted for Commissioner Swenson. And there were a few minor changes. Uh, Commissioner Kettering uh, to the County Planning Commission. Uh, for that, he uh, is not going to do the road highway. Commissioner Healy has volunteered to do that. I think some of these um, assignments could probably get deleted off here, like city master plan. That has never met in talking with some of the city commissioners. I don't even know if that's an active group anymore. So I think that could go. The E911 committee, from what I have gathered, meets under the LECP program. And I would say that the emergency management and LEP should go under the chair as a sign because when we have emergencies like we have, they're the ones who have to sign all the paperwork. So I think that's a good uh, assignment is that emergency management liaison should be the chair just because that's a, that makes sense to do that. So you're asking for the, the city master plan? Is yeah, that I don't even, I'm not even aware that that is an active committee because I've been on it for two years. We've never met. I've spoke with some of the city commissioners and they're not even aware of that being an active committee. I think that may have just been on there, but okay. I'm not aware of that being a committee. And then the E911 committee, that meets under a local emergency management uh, local emergency planning commission slash emergency management. I think that should be rolled into that because that's how, that's how those guys meet is that designate the E911 fund, E911 funds in the LEPC meetings. Okay. Now we have two on that committee. My understanding was we were supposed to have two votes on that committee. I, I've never met, met in the E911 committee. Is that E911, that's a special to the city. No, it's actually the chair of that is the city chief Levitt from the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. And it's joint with the city and the county manager. And yeah, it was active when they were addressing the county. The county mm -hmm. address it now is very inactive unless something comes up. So one person? Well, it hasn't. We have to have two. Well, yeah, I mean, the city has like three or four. Oh, we should have two then. And it was always one person. Yeah. Okay. Do you know when the last time that has met? Probably been about a year and a half ago. Okay. So, Dan, would you like to leave that under your list or would you like to move that to mine? And then we'll, uh, or to take, um, if we need two, I'm good with adding it to the emergency liaison. I think either. that would make sense because Paul is going to be involved in that. And, and that will be brought up in the LECP meetings okay. where they, they are going to allocate a lot of that E911 funding. So I think to streamline it, that's where that, the person who's doing that should be on the E911, in, in my opinion. That's what I would say. So my question is, who's going to be the second commissioner on there, either... Uh, Clemish or Fox. I've done it before. If you'd like to, Rhonda. My, my, uh... Doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. What well, do I need to get a quarter out, and we just flip for it? I'll def I'll, my first <laughs> gift to you, Wanda. So All right. Know. I'll <laughs> cross it off of your yeah. list then. Yeah. And I, 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 the city master plan, I think, should be crossed out because it. I'm, I'm not aware that's even an active committee. 
unless you've heard something. You know anything Gary? Thing about that, I, Daddy? No, sure. I've never. Uh -uh. Yeah. So I, I think that should just be crossed out. And then for as so most of these are, you know, some of these are from years yeah. back. Mm -hmm. Maybe they um, did. The veterans uh, service, I know you have me on there, but I, I'm actually a driver for the DAV. Um, and I kind of feel it'd be a little bit of a conflict of interest for me because uh, um, the, the VSO is the one who coordinates that. And I guess I wouldn't want to feel that I'm getting special treatment because I'm his liaison. So, I mean, Don's a I, veteran I do as well. That. Yeah. So, And then I think it would make most sense for the city county planning to be an actual person who's on the county planning commission. And that, that meets very rarely. I don't even think that's met since you've been here, has it, Gary? Um, so I think that would Thank probably you. be better something that the person who's the liaison for the planning commission should probably be in that position. Because what happens is you go to that meeting and you say, well, this is what we're working on in the county planning arena. So it would make sense for that to be the same person. So I would almost combine county planning person slash city county joint session, because that's what that's about. Well, a couple of months ago, we, we talked about uh, Joe and I uh, mm -hmm. heading up the uh, economic development type mm -hmm. thing and that, and that ties in with the county planning thing. yeah that's a separate that's there's two city commissioners and dave mingo and then they usually have a couple people from the city planning board and meet but with covid they haven't yeah. done that yeah. and we were going to do that two months ago but then something came up and, but it hasn't met for quite some time but yeah i think what you're talking about don does play into that i don't know if it's a a big deal if it's the plan liaison or not because gary attends yeah well when, but, when you and i went though it was a lot of uh discussion on you know dave would do he, here's all the building permits mm -hmm. we did and then we'd bring these are the building permits we did and right it, it would make sense for that to be the case i guess but when you think about it everything the planning commission sees we have to approve so we see everything they do well and there's two right yeah. you're right Yep. So yeah. that would add another to Don if we did that. Yeah. You know, I'm fine with the direction the board uh, wants to take. We are working on some uh, planning uh, zoning changes right now, dealing with residential lot sizes. So I guess uh, it, I'm probably not going to be able to see that one through. Um, and that's fine, but those are some of the things we were working at with the Planning Commission. I guess one other thing I see when I look at this list is we all agreed that with the new handbook we're going to be doing uh, we're going to be doing evals, and I believe that was going to be by uh, liaisons. We're going to do ev evals for the apart for the departments. And we should probably have a good distribution of commissioners who are giving evals for departments that they liaison. And uh, you know, I, from what I gather, I wouldn't have a uh, I wouldn't have a department under the county. It looks like Sherry has one, two, three, six of the seven. Don would have one with the planning commission. Wanda, you'd have one with the nurse, even though she's a state employee. And then Joe, you'd have one with the physical grounds, but that's not really, you know, that's not really a department, that's the, the crew members. So how is that gonna work when we do evals from as liaisons? Because, you know, Sherry, you're gonna have six of the nine departments and then some commissioners won't have any department. Well, it, I don't have to be the only one that sits in on those either. Looks. The and it looks to me like as as it's addressed, the head, the chair, 
takes the majority of of some of the liaisons to department heads mm -hmm. while the outside organizations go to the rest of us is that mm -hmm. kind of how it and i i can see that as kind of a um some continuity yeah. i guess within the county but i there be any way we could have uh two commissioners on the planning commission like we, we did have i know that was changed a couple months ago um i'd certainly still like to serve on that board but i serve at the will of the board i believe we voted on that direction last fall and that was to leave it at seven so i'd be if you want to take another one of those i'd certainly conservation that aligns with your involvement with the James River Water District with conservation and getting my you brother, would know about my brother is stuff. on the conservation board that I think that kind of be a conflict of interest. So I appreciate it, but so these emails are just for the department heads. Well, that's that's the un, unelected ones. And that's I thought the direction that we were going when we approved the handbook is and and the and the salary matrix the thought process that we had you know just a few weeks ago was that each department head was going to have to evaluate their people preferably yep. twice but at least once a year and then we were also going to evaluate the department heads as a commission and that was going to be done through the liaison at least that's what it was if it's something different now that's fine but I no, guess, I was just yeah. I was just clarifying that sure, it was sure. just the department. The yeah. department heads will will eval their own. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. that's that's yeah, that's yep. how I understood it. Yeah, so I, I guess uh, if if Sherry thinks uh, she can handle that, uh, I I yeah. don't have an objection uh, yeah. to the chair doing the major number of them because she's the one that's going to be in the more daily contact with with uh, many of them so essentially they're the same assignments i had this year except for drainage so i'm good i'm good with keeping all of those is there an issue with joe i mean his dad is on the drainage board is that going to be an issue and that's if that's up to I mean, here, I guess. To, to, you know, I, I think we possibly create some problems if Commissioner Healy is on the same board as, as his father. I, I don't want to speak for Joe. I, I, Dave is a good guy. Joe's a good guy. But I, as we as a county, is that a good idea? So, and if, if it brings any concern, then. Well, it's, somebody's going to bring it up probably sooner or later, but. I'm fine if you're I fine with it, Jerry. to conservation. Do you want me to take drainage back then? That makes sense, Sherry, since uh, you were going to do the drainage zoning change or the change to the drainage reg, so you're most familiar with it. So you're changing Sherry back to drainage and Joe to conservation and taking drainage off. Yep. And Don, you're going to take veterans. Yes. Okay. And Dan, you're the E911 is going to be with um, emergency liaison. I I correct? personally think that's where it should be, but it's up to the board. And that's good. Decision. And then the city master plan that's going to be taken off. Correct. Okay. Yes. So are we good with all of the yeah, swapping? I, I would do district three if you're willing to give that up, Sherry. That would be fine. So if we're con adding E911 to the emergency management, do I go there too or not? Um, you're gonna stay on E911. Okay. So we have two votes on that board. Okay. So, but all of the other emergency liaison stuff will be on my plate. So it's just whenever that committee meets. 
So, oh, so you're gonna still have one there. Yeah. Okay. So she'll still be there, and then okay. I'll be there too. I guess if oh, it's easier, be... just put my name there. Okay. Would and you wanna, Joe? Would you wanna give up the uh, the grounds with Jeff? Because I, I guess I would be willing to do that if you don't have time. That actually would work well with the IT changes that are happening. Yeah, I would be fine. With okay, that. I would do that. Say that one again. Physical plant grounds. Okay. Just like when there's an issue with the buildings and things like that. I, working with Jeff. Jeff's pretty good. He so is, you don't have a, you won't have a lot of issues. Yeah, no, he is good. And I did give you, if you saw the um, Craig, um, yeah. um, the submitted a, for, yep. for the Wi-Fi uh, update. All right, so if I add things up here, three, four, five, six, I've got seven, Dan's got seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Don's got seven. Wanda's got eight. And Joel's got six. I, think I got six now. So. The young guy. So goes by. The, <laughs> <laughs> the new commissioner's getting getting a uh, an extra one here. So on that E9, Wanda, go ahead. Oh. Go ahead. I was just going to say, Wanda, what I could E911 or nurse, even. I don't. Well, didn't they just say that E nine one one never meets? No. <laughs> I'm thinking I want that one. I'm you say that, maybe and you then should be the nap. You'll have a bunch of meetings all <laughs> of a sudden. Well, oh, well, then I'll take that one. But, um, but I'd like to keep the safety center one. Okay. Do you want to take nurse then? That would be fine. I okay, so nurse. we'll move nurse to Joe, and then everybody's got seven. Lucky so number. Where did Joe go? Nurse. Nurse. Joe took nurse off your list. So we've got this, the state pays for the nurse, and then I assume the secretarial position would be yeah. covered there, too. So yeah, because we pay for we pay for that. that one. All right. Is everyone good, then? So I will read this off. So Sherry has ambulance, equalization, emergency contact, emergency liaison, E911, Homeland Security emergency planning. So essentially that's one pot. Road and highway, weed board and drainage. Dan has historical, IT, library, senior center, or just the center, City County Planning, District 3, and Physical Plant. Don has Chamber Government, County Planning, Federal Prison, Human Services Center, Mental Health, YAPG Executive Board, and Veterans. Wanda has Chamber Board of Directors, E911, Napa Rail, Safety Center, City County Planning, YAPG board and Yankton rail. And then Joe has conservation. Oh, oh, and Joe, oh, no, no. yep. No, no. Joe has conservation, extension 4-H, joint powers, road highway, safety center, Yankton rail, and then the nurses in there. I think I skipped that one. So I think everyone, if I added it right, has seven. So with that, I would entertain a motion to approve those assignments. I'll move approval of those assignments. I'd second. I have a motion by Kettering, a second by Fox to approve the 2021 assignments as discussed. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. We have our assignments. And we're right on time. A good place to be. So the last thing in item number eight is official newspapers. And that's the Preston Poet and Observer. 
So we need a motion to name those two newspapers as our official newspapers for 2021. I would move. Second. I have a motion by Fox and a second by Kettering to approve the Press and Dakotan and the Observer as our 2021 official newspapers. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. The papers have been named and item number eight is done. Item nine, food service bids for jail. Come on up. Good evening. Uh, remember back in November, I think we received notice. Oh, turn the mic on, please. Thank you. Current food vendor, which is Summit Foods, that uh, there was going to be a substantial increase above and beyond the CPI because of COVID, other things, and that's, that's understandable, and, and they all. So we hadn't done a request for proposal for a few years, so it was time to get other proposals, and, and we advertised, and we received three. The uh, three are from, of course, Summit, Bid Again, uh, Trinity Food Service, and uh, Consolidated Food Service. All three of them are large. Trinity's probably the largest in the country. Uh, there's the three main ones right now and, and all bid. Uh, the executive summary, the, the, their bid packets are in the auditor's office are each about 100 pages if you care to look at them. Uh, I'll just kind of give you the rundown. Uh, they all met the requirements of the RFP. And then their pricing, uh, their pricing structures uh, came out to be where Summit Food Services was the highest, followed by Consolidated, and Trin Trinity Food Service was, was the lowest price. We're still having that, that we're still going to have an increase next year. Uh, what that can work out to be, worst case scenario, will be about $33,000 if we don't add additional prisoners. Uh, if we go back to pre COVID numbers, the bid from Trinity will be a wash and will be at the same as we were a year and a half ago. Uh, the difference between the uh, Summit and Trinity, when we're at the numbers of 100 to 119, with Summit it'd be an increase between 75 and $95,000, uh, where with the bid by Trinity it would be a no increase at those numbers. And that's where we're at. Uh, it's always hard to change. It's a, it's a long process uh, to switch vendors out. They have to hire new employees more than likely. Uh, they don't keep the ones that are currently there. Uh, but it's up to the commission. Uh, to pick a vendor. I'm sorry? It's up to the commission to pick. pick. Approve. You don't Approve. have any concerns with either? Which one I do mean, you mean? They're all legitimate, mention? all legitimate. Well, and... I, I can't stand, <laughs> we've had a great relationship with Summit, which is, used to be CBM. They were actually a local company that was nationwide. Uh, they were bought out by Summit. Uh, same people are still there. I mean, they're, they're a good company. I would have no problem keeping them, but I can't stand up here and say, let's just pay them an extra $95,000. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Do you see any, Austin, incurring any major costs in the transition? No. Any, okay. No. What's the quality of the food? They, they all have to meet ACA standards, American Correctional Association standard. It's not five-star dining, but it's nutritious. Uh, I'm not going to say it's... Is it edible? Of course. Of course. <laughs> so you need a motion to pick one. No, yes. with, the, with these options, there's option one, there's, option two, or do we just need a vendor? What, what, what we, we took their highest... Uh, the, the option two there on the one is just if we add on a 
months. But yeah, we're not we're not going to deal with that. So it, it, we need to need uh, it just be which vendor we, okay. we want to use. Uh, have, have you had many complaints with the existing vendor? No, I mean you're always going to get complaints, always, but not. I mean, it's no been more satisfactory. Than, they are, they are. Uh, but that's the chance you take when we go out to request for proposal, and when they, I mean, they brought up the increase, and instead of just saying, "Yeah, we're going to accept that," the, the prudent thing to do was to get uh, proposals and I mean it's a contract so all three companies have to abide but you know if they don't we have to get rid of them so. I'd move that we uh, accept Trinity as our food source vendor for the deal I'd second that I have a motion by Healy a second by Kettering to approve Trinity as the food service provider for the jail. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0, Trinity. New supplier. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. One thing, I, I, you can't deal with it tonight, but I think for the next meeting, I'll, uh, it's probably time to raise the daily fee we charge other counties for housing their prisoners to become consistent with what others are doing. We can't raise our fees with our federal contracts. I mean, that's it's a contract. Mm -hmm. um, we can for the other counties and, and most counties have gone up. So I'd recommend you consider an $80 a day fee for housing outside prisoners. Uh, state what is it now? 70 state statute dictates what we can charge the department of corrections so we can't raise that one but or the federal government ones because we're in a contract with them but uh, for anybody else and, and that's reasonable i mean that's what most of them are at but some are okay. a lot higher less than juvenile detention i know that much <laughs> but that's for another another meeting okay. if you want thank you thank you thanks jim Item number 10, the first line there is to schedule a special meeting for the property liability insurance. Some information has been sent out already, but we had discussed um, the possibility of actually having a special meeting versus taking time out of a general meeting for that. Is there still interest in doing that or are we looking at trying to get this squeezed into a regular meeting? Dan, I guess my estimation is that we could sit down now with the information that we've got and come up with a matrix defining coverage yeah, and present it. Yeah, I, you know, I think we tried to do that last time. I, um, there are so many variabilities, you know, with the insurance and we have what what insurance is called in one area is called something else somewhere else and and uh i guess from all the questions you know we asked everybody for questions and and we answered most of them and then there was more questions i guess i i would think that maybe a meet an hour ahead of one meeting or, or something to have everybody here i know you you haven't been involved in the uh discussion and she'll probably have some good questions but I think that might be a better way to do that. We we did kind of present it and, and additional things were asked of us afterwards. What yeah. what would uh, change my position okay. on that a little bit was sure. the, the strong uh, testimony by the sheriff, the ambulance and EMS mm -hmm. on that special insurance coverage and if they left, somebody else to go to this and now it's been a good relationship that mm -hmm. that seemed to me to be a significant thing to think about other sure. than that well i think uh, we had all of our costs either at the last right you know because we had three different plans yeah. that, 
and, and that's that's part of it. I mean, Don and I worked on this for several days, and we didn't even have all the information until we got to this meeting because, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's something that we as commissioners, the insurance for all the departments, we should at least know what those are. And, and as of right now, we don't. But uh, it's it's up to you, Don. I, I think having both. Um, both insurance companies come in and answer any questions that we have would be worthwhile. Give us a final proposal on where we are because I, I think we do have an opportunity to save the county a substantial amount of, of uh, dollars, tax dollars. And if, even if we don't switch, it's a good idea to review these policies and know where we're standing. Wanda, I will send you the information. So what's our decision? I'm, I'm okay with that. Let's set up a special meeting, but let's set it up uh, prior to the end of uh, January because we, we kind of said we want this done by March uh, first. Sixty days, March right? first, yeah. I think. March yeah. 1st, and that, so. it sounded like the longer we wait, you know, if we do switch, it's going to cost more tax dollars to do that. So. Um, and along with that, is special meetings for Article Five amendments. So talking about those, if we're looking at a special meeting for insurance, we need to figure out when the amendment meetings are going to be as well. So we have five people schedules to align. I'm good most any time. I can typically make most any, so can I. Your court schedule is no probably the most challenging. It's more challenging during the day, but obviously in the evenings, I'm, I have more time. So if we do it an hour before or an hour after a commission meeting, that would make most sense to me. Do, do any mornings work for you at all if we have to have a morning meeting? Friday mornings work. Friday mornings. Otherwise, I typically have court. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Dan? Why don't we try to meet an hour earlier on next, the next meeting, if that would work for one at, at, on the 19th? Is that for the insurance? Yeah. Okay, so that's January 19th. Then I think, you know, we should, well, we have most of the documentations now, and I, I we'd have, uh, we could get both insurance companies here and have them make their pitch and then make a final decision. Okay. I'm just guessing it would be awful difficult to get it all done in an hour. Yet I don't want to postpone it. Sure. Unless we have all the questions lined yeah. up when we come into that meeting and they're ready yeah. to do it, that I think an hour won't, yeah. won't do it. Well, some of the, I think we can cross some. So, one thing that we need to look at is the cost as comparable as we can to change what it costs to cancel, what our prorated fee is going to be, we can have before the meeting. Um, we already have our look back costs. I haven't sat down with the state's attorney's office, but that's something that can be done ahead of time. Well, and that's probably an important thing is that you should probably have the state's attorney's office, emergency management, emerge, med, uh, ambulance, and any other department head that that has their special insurance to be involved in that as well. If we're looking at days, I I, I do I, I, the 22nd on a Friday. If that works for Wanda, I could do that on the 22nd. Well, I didn't bring my calendar, <laughs> but nothing is coming to mind sure. on the 22nd. So, so what time? Um, anything, anytime. I Nine or I 10. I'd say nine o'clock. Nine o'clock, January 22nd, which is a Friday. And we're looking at that as an insurance meeting. So that would mean the earliest we could make, uh, well, yeah, we could make decision that time because it's advertised. So then you'll approve it then February 2nd meeting. 
uh, well, if we have advertised that meeting as reviewing the insurance, we can improve it then as long as it's advertised. Yeah. Okay, so we will put a double box around January 22nd at 9 a.m. for insurance. Now, the next one is we had discussed having two meetings for Article 5, and we had discussed a morning meeting, excuse me, and an evening meeting, so the public had opportunity, depending on their work schedule, to attend one of those meetings. Proposals for that. I think the sooner the better. Agreed. So I would say let's try and schedule it sometime uh, during the month of uh, January. Ms. Green. So let's pick an evening first. An evening in January. <clears throat> I'm open. What nights don't work for Tuesdays obviously don't work. Um, Does the city meet on Monday night? City meets on Mondays. Every Monday? Not every Monday. The first Monday? Every Monday. I was trying to think, when do we have our task force meetings? That was always a good night to meet. Was it the first and third or second and fourth? I can't remember. Anybody know when the city meetings are? It must have been the okay. second. It must, we must have had ours the second and the fourth because I think it was off of what our commission meetings were. You're right. So a second, would a second Monday or a fourth Monday work? Is, I think the 18th is a holiday. It is, okay. So the 11th or the 25th? 25th probably works better for myself. Okay, Monday, January 25th. Six o'clock or seven? Six. Would Six be my PM. recommendation. Okay, so that special meeting will be for Article 5 amendments. Now we need to pick a day meeting and Saturdays are probably open for that, but I don't know if that's wise. I, we've had Saturday meetings before. Thoughts? I don't have a problem with Saturday meeting. I'd rather not do Saturdays if we can avoid it. If somebody wants to come to that, they're gonna come to that instead of, you know, sacrificing staff's time to come here. I'm sure the state's attorney will come and the auditor will come and Valley will come. And I, I, I would rather not make some of the employees come in on their day off. So how about Friday, January 15th in the morning? I can't that day. I'm gonna be out of town. I could do, February 5th for Friday. 29th or the 5th? I think that would give a couple weeks in between so that people, if they missed the first one, could then attend the second one. We wouldn't want to have them in the same week, I wouldn't think. So it's been thrown out February 5th. Since there's no comment, I'm assuming that's a good day. Works for me. Works for me. So nine o'clock, Friday, February 5th. So that will be the second meeting for Article 5 discussion. Who will be in charge of putting an agenda together for those meetings? Well, we'll validate those agendas. So as, as far as uh, what we're discussing, Don? It'll be just one. I mean, it's not going to be. I, I think what Don's asking is the materials for us to review at those meetings, not oh. just advertising. I, I don't want to come to that meeting and sit around with my thumb in my ear and oh. not accomplish a thing, and two hours later we leave. Yep, 100% agree with that. They just 
is that Gary's then to get the information to Valley to put it in the packets? Yep. At so least by Tuesday, right. so she can put it in the packets for you on Friday, on, so you can look at it on Thursday. So I think it would be wise to start with the amendments that we voted to send back to planning as a resource and the document that was presented at this level as a resource and obviously our current zoning. And does that give uh, you time to work with planning and zoning to develop recommendations no. or comments? <laughs> You know, I, I think our what we had discussed was that we were going to discuss it at the commission level here and then send it to planning for their review. So they would have the secondary review and it is allowed under our ordinance. And then they'd review it, have a public hearing, send it back to us. Is everyone good with that? All right, we have three special meetings chosen. And that covers item 10. So item 11 is advertised for director of equalization opening. And uh, you received the, um, her resignation. Um, I'll need a motion to accept the resignation and to uh, approve to advertise. Second. You have first that one. I will make a motion that we accept her, sorry, accept her resignation and open her position for application. I'll second that. I have a motion by Fox and a second by Clemish to accept the resignation of our director of equalization and to open that position up for applications, further discussion. I would like to say it's been a huge pleasure to work with Lori Mackey over the last couple years. There's not one time I ask a question where I did not get an answer. She has been just a super person to work with and that office runs as efficient as any office across the state. And I think any equalization director would tell you that. Um, and it's a, it's a huge loss to see her go, um, but she has trained her staff very well uh, to be able to not miss a beat. So sincere thanks to Lori for her how long? 16? 16 years of service to our county. Yep, no, Lori's she's very good to work with. I know Lori's not here, but I'd like to give her a round of applause just to show her our appreciation for her service to the county. Don't mind. Thank you, Lori. So we have a motion and a second on the table. Any further discussion? Yes. Um, when we're doing this, I don't think it's in the description. Um, we should set a date to close, or should mm -hmm. we set a date to close? It well, just depends you, on what the applicants are. But yeah, if you want it in two weeks, a week, that's all we need. You know, a position because like th this is, you know, you. I think we keep it open until we find the right person, and that could be tomorrow, and that could be three months from now. Yeah, no, you're so uh, I, I guess it depends on, yeah, who applies, how many apply. exactly they, they exactly. can apply within two, right? Correct, yes, yep. Say so we keep it open until filled. There's no further discussion. Is everybody good? Yep. Okay, all in favor say aye. Aye. aye, 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 all opposed, nay. Motion carries 5 0. Uh, we have accepted a resignation and open the position for application. And item 12, we also have an opening now on the planning commission. Gary, did you want to say anything on this? Yes, uh, unfortunately we had a planning commissioner that had to resign due to health issues. And so we, we have another opening that will complete his existing term until uh, April, 2023. So I guess my thought was that we publish the next three Fridays and then close it on Monday, January 25th for the first meeting in February, if that works for everyone. Do we have two or three uh, planning commission members that are 
up for reappointment? We will have two more in, next two two? in April. April. And we usually start advertising for them around February. Correct. So we could just continue, but I would assume you'd want somebody in for the one position as soon as possible, so. Yep. All right, so I need a motion. I, I, I don't think you need Oh, you don't need a motion just, for that? Just to prove oh, All right, thank okay. you. Thank you, Patty. Are you uh, able to tell who had to resign? I don't know why not. Thank you. Yeah, it's Paul Harnes. Paul Harnes. All right, we are four minutes ahead of schedule and we have a hearing next, so we do need to wait on that. Item 15 is also a hearing. So item 16, I don't know if we wanna squeeze it in and discuss 2021 regular commission meeting times. Sure. It was uh, thrown out at our last meeting of the year that the 6 p.m. meetings at times get pretty darn late for folks and we've had folks leave because they get late and such. So it was proposed to start these meetings a little bit earlier. They used to start at four in the afternoon. Um, so that has been thrown out as a, maybe we should re go back to that, do the county's business between four and five and then have uh, hearings and such maybe 5.30 or six o'clock so that folks can get off work and still make the hearing portion of it. So I will open it up for others to speak. Well, I four o'clock is problematic for me. I have a heavy court schedule and it's not likely that the judges are gonna just let me get up and leave at four o'clock or 10 to four so that I can be at a, a commission meeting. I like six o'clock, but I could go to 5.30 because that would work for me. I just think that normal people um, who want to attend county commission meetings have regular jobs and the eight to five time slot doesn't usually work very well for those folks. You know, the reason it got switched from four to six was because of all the people who said they can't make it. Just like Wanda said, they, I work till 5.30 till six and this offered them an opportunity to attend the meetings um, myself earlier would be a problem you know I got four kids in school and um, I don't I don't think five four definitely wouldn't work and five wouldn't work and 530 probably wouldn't work most times so I'm, I'm a fan of keeping it at six if it is running too long you know I, I really think that maybe tightening up some of our rules on board of adjustment and things like that uh, would help set some time limits for how long a hearing's gonna last. These issues usually happen with the controversial ones. We don't need to discuss the same thing for three or four hours. I think putting a limit on it and sticking to it will help us get out of here on time. I, I would agree. One of the things that I factored in when I ran was six o'clock in the mm -hmm. evening, which um, makes it available for me. However, I have had the opportunity to listen to and watch some of the county commission meetings and it would seem like some people need to be more focused when they appear in front of the county commission and that they should have, a, we should have some kind of an, a time limit for their positions. I'd say that it's not only the public that comes to the meeting to present, but it's also the commissioners that debate and we, we could be a lot more efficient with our time. Joel? I do it at seven in the morning, but I don't think anybody's gonna follow <laughs> that one, so. Well, I, just, I just talked to my brother before I came to the office. He said the Aberdeen meets at, uh, I think he said nine in the morning. Majority of them meet at Most nine, counties, yeah. nine on Tuesdays. Yep. But I, I guess uh, I had not thought 
uh, about Wanda's uh, job and requirements. And so I guess I would say uh, 5.30, if we can do that and, and do our uh, operational issues at 5.30 and then start with strategic issues at 6, that would be a, a recommendation. I like the six o'clock starting time, and I think we should try to set better rules and keep the meetings moving along quicker, staying on topic, um, setting time limits, and I think we would accomplish the same thing. So I'm, I'm a fan for keeping it at six. Quarterly department head reports, and maybe maybe we have that at the separate meeting or maybe we I'm just trying to make so our employees aren't here at six o'clock or you know or or put a time limit on I, I would think a department head report could be no longer than 10 minutes sometimes they run half an hour I mean you should be able to say what you have to say in five or ten minutes pretty easily and move on that'd be my recommendation so I have a proposal for 5.30 and I have one for six. This is an example where we need to make a decision. <laughs> make so, a motion to keep uh, the meeting scheduled at six o'clock. I would second. I have a motion by Clemish, second by Fox to keep our meetings at six o'clock. Further discussion? We'll do a roll call vote on this one. Dan? Yes. Wanda? Yes. Don? Yes. Sherry? Yes. Joe? Yes. We remain at 6 o'clock, and we are at 7.02. Um, so I do need a motion to go into Board of Adjustment. So moved. Second. second. I have a motion by Healy, second by Fox, to go into Board of Adjustment. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion carries. We are now sitting as Board of Adjustment in item 13, Brad King Variance and Platt. Is Mr. King here? Yes. Next. So we do need to wait on that. I'm not sure where that came. I'm not sure where that came from, but all right. Go ahead and step to the, the um, microphone, it's already on. Tell us about your application, what you're requesting today. Um, <clears throat> I'm requesting, I own just under nine acres, right on the edge of the county, city line, city county line right there, one mile out. And when I first purchased it from Darlene Jensen, she raised the price on the property and I met the price in the agreement that the bottom section, which has been platted, would be given to me with the purchase. And it wasn't surveyed that way. And I had it surveyed to, after I finally got the property paid off and had money to get the surveyor in there to, to my knowledge, to get it platted so it could change hands into mine so she doesn't have to pay taxes on a piece of ground that basically I've been using with her permission and to make it my own ground. And when the surveyor went in, he said, which is Tom Week, he surveyed it and said that it was not surveyed properly from the beginning and it was accretion ground, which had been a part of the river it should have been a part of the original purchase to begin with. So I'm just trying to get my little piece of ground up to the Nebraska line in my name and avoid having Darlene to pay taxes on it. And the piece of ground that is under question is 2.38 acres and it borders the south end of mine, which would be the north side of Nebraska. So 
it, it takes me right up to the Nebraska line. <clears throat> so on the plat that Mr. Week has here, why did you not just draw that in with your other acreage and make it one lot? Why is there now going to be two lots that you own? From my knowledge, it'll be accretion ground and adjoined to my lot after it gets approved. So wasn't that part of the question that it will be accretion ground? So if this is a, and that's what I'm trying to clarify because I was not at your first hearing, so I didn't hear any of that. Dan, did you want to jump in here and explain anything that you heard? Gary, uh, would you have anything you'd like to add? Yeah, that's it's certainly a creation ground. Um, if if you wanted to stipulate that, uh, just to clean it up, if you wanted to clarify and have it have it uh, tied together, we could certainly do that either through equalization or through through a joint plat, but that's pretty much up to you. Because if we don't require something like that, this will be, it could be sold separate. And I don't think we want that because that, then we're creating a true variance that I struggle with approving. I think in the end, if we're going to do this, the lot you currently own needs to grow and be more in conformance in order to get a variance approved. Does everybody see where my concern is on that? Because we certainly don't want this to be able to be sold separate. And I'm all for putting everything, doing any steps necessary to get it put all into my name. I, it is Old River Bottom, it floods. I've been down there for maybe six years now. It's flooded three of the years. It is rather useless. I like it because the deer go through there and I don't want anybody behind me. I want to own mm -hmm. my ground to run right up to the property line. And I, th I think what the chairperson is saying is that rather than have it flatted this way with a long skinny lot with a little tiny lot at the bottom, mm -hmm. that it be platted as one piece of property. Am I right? Yes. Follow me? Does that make sense? Yes. And does that mean I've got to pay for another surveyor to come in and go through the Zion County Commission meeting? I don't know if you'd have to pay for it or if Mr. Brandt would do that for you because you've already paid for it and it's... Miss, Mr. Brandt was the one who originally surveyed it and didn't, in my personal opinion didn't survey it properly the way it should have been because when Tom went down there and found the original pin. Oh, so, Weeks, so it was Week, Tom, it, Tom Weeks. Weeks. I'm sorry. So then maybe Mr. Weeks would do it, but I don't know. Ask them both. I would just prefer to deal with Tom from here on out. And, and be honest. I'm sorry. I'd prefer to deal with Tom from here on out. He did a great job for me and went through several inquiries and do past surveys back into the 50s to find the right pins and where everything needed to be. Gary, do you know how big the piece of property to the north is? It's under 20 acres, I assume. It's yeah, six so point something. Yeah. And have we in the past, Gary, correct me if I'm wrong, done some legalese that will disallow lots to be sold separately. Correct, and that was what I was just coming up to say is that in the past you have allowed them to tie the two properties together with the, with the assumption that they would never be sold separately. Okay. And that would be, <clears throat> that would be correct on this. I mean, I want to have them both tied together whatever I just okay. would rather not have to go through everything I've just done to if I if it's necessary I will well I think there's two we can either tie it together or or it could possibly be planted as one but we don't know if there's cost or not I don't think anyone has any concern about your request more the details the on procedure. how it's done the procedure yep. 
So does any, any other questions at this time before I open it up for public comment? All right, sir, you may sit down for now. Anyone care to make a public comment on this application? I see no public comment on this, so we will close public comment for this hearing, bring it back to the commission for further discussion. Which would be our preferred route? I'd be fine tying it together myself. So accepting this accepting what and put in the condition it can never be sold separate. Right. And there is a, there's verbiage that we've used. I just don't know what it is. There's a, you know, that lot to the south is unbuildable. I mean, if you look, it's, it's in a river channel. And I know when we have done, done that in prior, it was in ag land. And I understand the reasoning for that, but, you know, it's it's not ever going to be built on. I'm fine tying them together, but uh, well, just in general practice, yeah, I don't think we yeah. should create non-conforming lots. I well, I think that's what happened here when he he bought that. So he's he he is coming. You know, I, yeah, which, I, I see what you're saying. We're just, yeah. I think it was a some problems platting it with the accretion ground that's driving the situation. Right. Any other comments? Preferred routes. You got on any recommendations? Yeah. So basically, sorry? what what was done on the next applicants, uh, the Spady property too, is that um, there was a deed restriction that was that was requested for to tie the two properties together. Has anybody run that by the title company? this deed restriction that you're talking of? It, it was proposed by Ross Denherger and, um, and approved also through the state's attorney's office. Okay. And um, basically uh, they said the city does this quite frequently. So I'd move approval of the variance request. Um, with the condition of a deed restriction tying the two the two lots together, I think is what you're after anyway. Then I would second it. I have a motion by Healy, a second by Fox to approve the Brad King variance, only the variance we're talking about right now. Um, on condition, there is a deed restriction that uh, does not allow the lots to be sold separately. Further discussion? Roll call vote. Joe? Yes. Wanda? Yes. Don? Yes. Dan? Aye. Sherry? Yes. Variance, the variance passed 5 0. Now we have a plat that we need to approve as well. Move approval of uh, the plat as presented. Track 4A DJ's edition 2.385 acres. I have a motion. Second. I have a motion by Healy, second by Kettering to approve the Brad King plat for lot A. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. Mr. King, you're good to go. Thank you. I think, Miss. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you, sir. All right, item number 14 is Phil's, um, is it Spady Holdings or Incorporated Conditional Use Permit? Is an applicant here. Did I say that properly? Spady, okay. So if you would tell us about your application. Sure. Um, 
So this is an application application for conditional use for the um, servicing of motor vehicles. Uh, the current covenants allow for um, sales, but they don't allow for the service of motor vehicles. So we're requesting that for a uh, camper sales and service dealership um, on, on the lot. We have been here before there was a couple of appointments and for that I apologize. Um, we made a change to the original plan to build on the lot for directly south of the first lot. Um, so that is why we're here again today. Um, last time we met, it was approved with the condition that we have an engineer do a, a drainage study plan. And so for that reason, we hired uh, Stockwell engineers. Um, Bard Ropes was the project engineer and he um, developed a very well thought out drainage study and drainage plan, topographic study um, to ensure that the, the drainage um, functions properly and we will have a certified um, contractor do that, that work. Currently we've worked with Slowly Construction on the project thus far um, and they'll ensure that it's that's followed to the engineer specs. This will create um, several jobs in the community. So um, we'll be looking at employing 15 full-time people. Um, with I'm sorry, excellent. how many? 15 full-time um, people in the, the Yankton County community um, with, with good jobs. This also will allow for um, serving county residents with an opportunity to do sales and service locally rather than commuting the current 60 miles um, for their camping and trailer needs. The area attracts 1.4 million visitors, several of which are for camping and to utilize the state parks in the area. So it'll be a nice, nice enhancement to the county. Um, Ma'am, what did you say your name was? I'm sorry, my name's Mariah Nelson Mariah. And, and I work for Hill City Holdings. This is a, like a $4 million facility as well, was it not? Or how, how many, uh, how, how I'm sorry, is this Dan, facility? I'm not hearing you very I'm well. Sorry. How, I'm how many, I'm sorry, I should have talked to you. How, uh, how big is this facility and how, how much is the, wasn't it a several million dollar facility? It's a $1 was, million dollar yeah, facility. That's what I was Thank yep. You. Yep, and um, all local contractors were hired for the construction. So um, that's something we pride ourselves on and, and wanting to take care of the locals first. What was the reason you moved um, from the position, the, the lot you were at to the one behind it now? Uh, mainly, honestly, for aesthetics. Um, we mm -hmm. felt that a, a longer drive uh, would be nicer visually okay. and allow for better display of our camper sales. Um, there's eight service bays in the facility, so we would expect to um, or hope to do, do service work, um, of which several will be non-motor, um, but we will want the motor vehicle use permit to um, do motor homes if, if allowed. Thank you. Is it your intention to make that road, I believe it's Deborah Boulevard, or, or is it going to remain gravel, or is there a plan for that? Um, that, that road is owned by the association. Um, it was owned by whom? By the association, the homeowners association. Um, so it, it would depend upon um, homeowner association approval as to what we can do with that road. Mm -hmm. uh, we would love to, to pave it eventually. Um, the plan is also to pave the lot eventually. We'll start with, with gravel, um, but the engineer suggested concrete eventually versus asphalt. Um, so that will be our intentions in coming years. So the front access is off which road? The front access is off of Deborah Boulevard. Um, so from the highway, you turn onto the Deborah Boulevard, um, just as though you're going to the Bed and Biscuit or Premier Ventures, um, you'll access using that same turn off. And that's an association access point. I don't have any more questions. What's your first name again? My name is Mariah. Mariah. Yep, sorry. Any other questions for the applicant before public comment? All right, you may sit down for just, just a little bit here. Anyone in the audience care to make a public comment? There being no public comment, public comments closed. 
We'll bring it back to the commission for further discussion. So the planning commission looks like they stepped through the, um, the points that we are to uh, review, ingress, egress, et cetera. Are there any concerns with their conclusions as they have presented them? The parking, the loading areas, refuse and service areas, at all. No, it looks like they went through the one. Looks like you're going to be right at the end of the cold sec. It's the back side. Oh, that's the back side. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Make a motion to approve the conditional use permit as presented. On findings of fact. Yes, based on findings of fact. Second. I have a motion by Clemish and a second by Healy to approve the conditional use permit as presented based on findings of fact. One question for you, do you have to get, um, as far as uh, dealing with the oil and all of, the, all of that stuff, do you have to get uh, licensing for that from the state? I was just curious. We have checked on that and we, have, we need no more licensing. You don't need right. any licensing no, at we all? We already have obtained our sales license from the state. Okay. Um, that goes along with refuse because sure. it's uh, certainly a business that's going to make different kinds of waste than a normal business. Any other questions or concerns about the application? I think it's a good addition to uh, the Highway 52 corridor um, camper sales. Sure would have been nice to have it this year. And uh, like she said, right now you have to drive 50, 60 miles to have your camper repaired and it's better to have that in Yankton than people driving out of town. It makes sense. You need some awning parts when you're up and old running. Yeah. Any other comments? All right, we'll do a roll call vote, please. Dan? Yes. Joe? Yes. Wanda? Yes. Dan, Don? Yes. Sure. Yes. COP approved 5 0. Thank you. So at this time, we are done as Board of Adjustment. I entertain a motion to go back into regular session. So moved. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to give that one to Kettering and a second to Healy uh, to go back into regular session. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Motion passes 5-0. We are now in regular session and at item number 15. This is the first reading for to re requesting a rezone of property in a dual zone of Lakeside Commercial District and Moderate Density Rural Residential District R2 to Moderate dens Density Rural Rural Residential District R2. Said property is legally described as lot 1A and lot, one, lot 3 of Leona's second edition in the northwest corner of section 17 township 93 north, range 56 west of the fifth principal meridian hereafter referred to as Utica South Township, Yankton, South, Yankton County, South Dakota, E911 address is 119 Marina Bluffs Road and the applicants are in attendance to dis for discussion. All right. Would the applicant like to come up and make a statement? Come on up. Please state, state your name for the record. Good evening, everyone. My name is Brian Weeman. <clears throat> the property that uh, we're talking about, we purchased in 2010 and built a home on it in 2011. At the time it was dual zoned, um, both R2 residential on the north part of it, and then uh, Lakeside Commercial in the south part of it. Uh, a few years after that, we purchased uh, the lot to the west of that. That also has the same issue where it's uh, partially zoned R2 residential and also partially zoned Lakeside Commercial. So we would be requesting to have it all zoned uh, R2 residential. So the two lots. Mm -hmm. Could you come up here and point Sir, out your lots just so I 
clear. I think this is your home. Uh, that's correct. Yes. So that's our home there. Yep. And this is our lot that we own. Okay. So you want yeah, these provide. these both residential? Yes. Okay. Just want to be clear on that. Did you talk to the neighbor there about if they wanted to, just curious if they were wanting that to be R2? That's not his responsibility to make sure the neighbors no. sent out letters and everything. And yep. He did his part. So there was no feedback from them about being interested in changing to R2? Oh, I, I think they would. Uh, I just, it's not their permanent residence, you know. So oh, gotcha. It's okay. a little concern to them at this point. Those individuals, is that the old Leona, John and Leona Kabeisman house? Yes, that's okay. correct. And this wouldn't impact the people on the other side of the road, the fireworks people, would it? No. Okay. No. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? All right, sir, you may sit down. Thank you. Thanks. So since this is a rezoning, it is a hearing. Would anyone care to make a public comment? There being none, public comment is closed. Any other questions for the, by the commissioners? This is the first reading. At our next meeting, we will have the second reading and actually vote at the next meeting. Gary, would you give us your opinion? You think this is a good project three? We're basically rezoning something from a dual use to its actual use. Correct. And, and so the idea here is to bring it into compliance with its use so it makes sense. And you're planning for the next meeting for the second reading? Correct. Okay. Put that one on there. All right. Um, at this time, item 15 is done for the time being. We've already done item 16, and we are at item 17, which is public comment. Would anyone care to make a general public comment? All right, there being none, public comment is closed, and we are, I think this is one of the first meetings we are actually ahead of schedule. This is scary. Maybe it, go, Wanda. your good luck. So I'll, that's I'll great. Take credit for that. <laughs> All right, so for commissioner updates, does anyone have um, anything they'd like to share? I, I'd just like to thank you for uh, sending that letter that you sent to the employees of the county. I think it was very appropriate and extremely well written. Thank you. Welcome. Anything else we'd like to share? Uh, yeah, Craig Miller handed this out. I didn't have this before the meeting, but here are the quotes to upgrade the Wi-Fi for the building. Uh, you know, Don's, Don's my witness. The Wi-Fi here is suffering pretty bad and, and it really should be upgraded. Um, I'd imagine uh, that we'll put this on the next meeting for approval. Uh, Deb, we had our consultant give us some quotes uh, for, for the Wi-Fi upgrade. I don't know if you saw this. Uh, so, um, yeah, we've done. I don't know. Do you, I, I believe I haven't spoken with him yet, but I, I think he called a couple people. I don't know. Do you, do you want to have this look this over and see if we should try to get more quotes um, or not? We really don't. I mean, I know we don't have to advertise because it's not enough, but I'm not, and I know you like yeah. the quotes for, but sure. Am I reading this correct? Option A's got 1,300 megabyte speeds for $1,500. Option two has 867 for more than twice that amount. Yeah, I guess those are the options. Uh, Number, he, Craig said no. um, option A is probably the cheapest way to go, but he just thought he'd get put that out to you anyway. I just was wondering if I'm missing something because it's, a to B is more that, What than, did he say A was? You know, it's much faster speeds for less than half the price. Yeah. That's what I'm just wondering if I'm missing something. He said that um, option A is a cheaper version, but it might not be effective to go with option A. Um, it might not improve anything to go with option A. So. But he just thought he'd 
he'd give, give you an you option. Yeah. Yep. So I'll see if he can write these up a little bit more. He was supposed to get back to me and these were just here for the meeting. So. Yeah. It's I, thought, a, I didn't give it with the, sorry, Wanda. That's all right. And I just want to that Craig, you know, is our regular IT and he knows our, our system. And so we're essentially just one. We're just looking at a wireless router for each department, essentially, each room in this building. Uh, not, I think, just for the commission room right now, because I don't think anybody else. Okay. Any other updates? Actually, yeah, we'll have. We'll have, um, if you want, we'll have Craig come in and explain them. All right. At this time, we are at executive session for litigation pursuant to South Dakota codified law 125-2 subpart three. I entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Kettering, a second by Fox to go into executive session. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. aye. All opposed nay. Motion carries 5-0. We are now in executive session.
Everyone turn your microphones back on. And I would entertain a motion to come out of executive session. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Kettering, second by Fox, to come out of executive session for the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Motion carries. We are back in regular session. No action will be taken as a result of the executive session. Items for next meeting. I have, I believe the statute says we need to appoint our highway superintendent every two years. We came to that conclusion and it's been two years since we hired Mike. So I think we need to get that on the agenda. We'll have to approve salaries at the next meeting. Uh, Mike is going to get on the agenda to start talking about load limits and bids for supplies, so he'll probably contact you. Um, the daily fee uh, for other counties, the sheriff was gonna put on. We'll have our second reading for- Weeman. The, yep, the rezone and oh, uh, Wi-Fi quote. Those are the things that I had. Anybody have anything else? I'd like to get an update on the ambulance billing. I think it's been about six months or so since we've done that. I, I don't, and maybe it's not ready, um, but last time he was here at his uh, quarterly report, um, he mentioned he was gonna put that together and just like to see how that new billing system is working. When are normal quarterly reports? The next okay, meeting, so perfect. it'll be on the next yeah. meeting. Be for the January or December. Yep, so it'll be the last three months of the year and actually it'll round out the year, so. All right. With that, I entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. I have a motion by Fox, second by Healy to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay, motion carries, we are adjourned. <laughs>